All right, this is your brother Aisha Yara coming at you with another lesson. First off, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones and learn this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled Animals on the Verge of Extinction in 2024. All right. Animals on the verge of extinction in 2024. Now I got inspired to do this lesson originally because a brother shared a post about a certain parrot that was becoming extinct. And um he wrote uh hashtag new management. And so, you know, uh I looked into it and everything, and then that led me into looking into other articles, and then eventually I just went ahead and typed in animals. <laughs> Animals uh, that's supposed to be extinct in 2024 and there's a whole list that popped up man a whole list and The thing is that there's a lot of animals. That's very popular That's on the verge of extinction and we already know the reason why and the reason why is because Esau the so-called white man He's ruling the earth right now, and he's destroying it Literally no one or anything can't live in this earth as long as he is in, in power man all right, so this is gonna be a real quick video uh, through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So this is um from Earth.org. It says 10 of the world's most endangered animals in 2024. And um, you know, you scroll down, you know, they got the top 10, you know, leopard, which is crazy, rhino. Like I said, some of the most popular animals that we all know. You know, you think about animals off the top of your head, you know, as far as like the big beasts of the field. These are some of the ones that pop up first. All right, see, as you can see, gorilla. It says, these are, there are two species of gorillas, the eastern gorilla and the western gorilla, which both have two subspecies. Three out of four critically endangered on the IUCN red list of threatened species. The only one that isn't is the mountain gorilla, a subspecies of the eastern gorilla, which is considered endangered, all right? So, as we all know, you know, Esau can cover up his story Esau is only going to allow so many articles to come out about the truth of what's going on in the earth. So we already know what they say is not the full truth. We already know it's way worse than what it is. All right. But like I said, man, you got like, like I said earlier, you got lepers, rhinos, gorillas. Uh, I think you can pronounce that swallow. Vaquita. Tigers. <laughs> porpoise. Turtles. Like I said, very common animals that you'll learn about as a kid, man. Elephants. All right. These are very common animals that you will learn about as a kid. And these uh, animals are on the verge of not even existing anymore, man. And like I said earlier, and the reason being is because Esau's ruling the earth. He's destroying everything, man. And just like, you know, when I look at Elder Malcolm's videos, he always go into the videos about the chemtrails. He goes to the videos on how it could be in the, in the middle of July, and a lot of the trees are not even fully bloomed yet. And the reason being is because, you know, the air is polluted. You know, these cities that's built up, you know, the environments that's around these certain plants, they can't get the resources and, the, and you know, the necessities that they need in order for them to uh, grow fully. Because technically, when you um, get a, a, a cluster of grapes, a cluster of grapes should be huge. You know, you get grapes now at the grocery store. You know, you could pick them like, you know, like they bite size. Actually, grapes would be way larger than what they are. Same thing with everything else. But Esau is the one, you know, that gives us this uh, lab-grown fruit and vegetables. You know, you go to the store and they'll be like, yeah, here's the seedless watermelon. Here's the seedless orange. Seedless this, seedless that. Then they spray up uh, pesticides on all of the vegetables and all of that. So eventually, because they want you to get sick and they just pretty much want to get rid of you because they want to depopulate the earth. So they're destroying the earth in order to get rid of lives, man. And that's off. That's wicked. And this is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why Esau got to go. He just got to go. All right. So like I said, this is going to be a real quick video. You know, when I saw the, the post from the brother, I was just like, man, you know, let me do a quick video on this because, you know, we can't live here. We just can't, man. We can't enjoy the earth, which which is supposed to be paradise. Earth is supposed to be paradise. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a place that takes care of you. It's supposed to be a place for pleasure. It's supposed to be a place for fun. 
It's supposed to be a place for growth. All of those different things, but we cannot experience that as long as Esau is in rulership. So let's start off with Revelation chapter 11, verse 17. It says, saying, we give thanks, O Lord, power almighty, which are and was and are to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So you reap what you sow, just like it says in Galatians 6 and 7. Esau is destroying the earth, so he has to be destroyed, man. And like I said, it's just one of the many reasons why he got to be destroyed. But before he's going to be completely destroyed, man, he got to serve that slavery, man. And those days are going to be long, point blank, period. Let's get Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> Let's get Revelation chapter 6 and go to verse 7. It says, the fourth seal, death. And it says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast come in uh, Salaki. It says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed, followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the field this is speaking about esau all right he's one of the uh he represents the pale horse and it says hell follow with him meaning a condition all right everything that esau touches turns into something very very evil and bad and it turns out for the worst at all times man and it says and power was given to them over the fourth part of the earth to kill the sword we already know that esau is blessed with the sword and he's definitely using that on Jake. And he's using that on a lot of things, man. They torture the animals. There's all kind of videos out there where they tell you to um, uh, uh, be advised or they give you the warning because the video may be, may be very graphic. And then you click on the video, man. They over here beating the animals with all kind of weapons, man. Torturing them. Instead of just slaughtering them so then they, you know, they could be food. And they over here putting all the animals through pain, man. Esau got to go and it says that with hunger and with death and with the beast of the field that's why it says and death and hell followed with him because wherever Esau goes death will be there man and hell will be there as well and there's a video <laughs> that just recently came out um from this youtuber called Long Beach Griffey he he, he uh, entitled the video uh when God made the black man or whatever fast forward Spoiler alert and whatever, <laughs> you know. At the end of the video, uh, he put, he uh announced uh, the, uh Esau, and at the end of his video, he was like, "Yeah, this is the dude that's destroying the earth right now." Of course, he didn't say Esau. He said presenting the so-called white man. You know, if you look it up, look up Long Beach Griffin and look up when God made the black man. You'll see what I'm talking about. At the end of the video. He says, here's the white man. He was like, here's the person that's destroying and fucking up the earth. He literally says that at the end of the video, man. All right. So a lot of people know what's going on. They already know that this earth needs new rulership, new management. And it's coming, man. It's coming. Let's get Sirach chapter 10. You know, I, I like to grab this from time to time. Sirach 10 and 3. It says, an unwise king destroyeth his people. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hands of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. We, and we already know who that Lord is. That's going to be Yahweh Shai. He's going to be the one that's going to be sent over the earth, and he will be profitable because the kingdom of heaven is going to prosper forever and ever and ever, man. All right? It says, In the hand of the Most High is the prosperity of man. And upon a person of the scribes shall he lay his honor. All right. So this is what we waiting for. We waiting for our Lord Yahweh Shai to come back. This is why we always say we need our Lord. We need Yahweh Shai. Once Yahweh Shai comes back, that changes everything, man. It really does. Because ain't nobody going to be able to do or say anything. What you going to do or say against the Lord, man? You're not going to say nothing. You're just going to stand there. You're going to be like, well, it's time to accept my fate. And that's exactly what Esau is going to do, man. Esau's going to be afraid, but once Yahweh Shai is set up, this is what's going to happen, man. 
And then we'll end it with this. This is Isaiah chapter 14. We'll start at verse 3. And it says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. America. All right. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Yahweh Shai is, is going to take Esau out of rulership. It says, and He smote the people in wrath with, with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. As soon as Esau is out of rulership, the whole earth is going to be at rest. That includes people, animals, plants, everything, man. Anything that's living is going to be at peace. It's going to be quiet. Everything is going to be perfect. Esau is going to build up our kingdom. He, they're going to they're gonna be the only ones that's not going to be able to enjoy it once it's all done, man. Once everything is finished, they're going to have to be exterminated. And it's the point right here, verse 8. And it says, Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of, Le of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Ever since, you know, when that time comes, when Yahweh shall take Esau out of, out of rulership, everybody's going to say, Man, nobody's come up against us. Nothing is happening with us anymore, man. Everything is good. So this is what we waiting for, man. That's why it says, yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee. Because even the plants, man, the, the plants, the trees, the fields, the jungles, you know, all of that, man, it's, it's, it's messed up. Just for the simple fact that Esau always got to do this type of exploring. He got to do all these experiments. And he just doesn't care, man. And he's proud. It's like he has that one um uh thing where he says, uh, if, 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 if God were to make a drought, it really doesn't matter because we can create our own water. <laughs> That's Esau being proud, man. He thinks that his house is going to continue forever, like the scriptures say. He thinks he's going to be in a rulership seat for a very long time. But, like I said, there's going to be a greater power that's going to come. And he's going to be way more powerful than Esau. And that's going to be Yahweh Shai, man. So that's what we're waiting for, man. But like I said, just real quick, just wanted to bring this out because... um. We already know we living in times where, you know, Esau just want to eliminate everything, man. He just want to delete everything. He's never satisfied. He'll have one plan and he'll follow through with it and he won't even be satisfied with that. He'll come through with another plan. But in the midst of those plans, he's messing up everything. It's sad as you got to see certain things that we grew up with. Like I said, elephants and, and turtles and tigers. Common animals, man. Common animals are getting ready to not exist anymore just for the simple fact that they don't know how to rule the earth. But this is why, you know, the Most High is showing us this, man. And it's the Most High uh, putting Esau on the front seat, too. Because this is uh, one of the things that he sees and he's going to be judged for it. All right. So I'm going to end it with that. Just want to bring that out real quick. So with that, I'm going to say, call Halayim Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstones to learn this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Rod to Zod, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala, keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.